I'm in the midst of, um, in fact, I've marked a bunch of exam papers. I'm in the midst of second marking a bunch of exam papers. Just had a bunch of students pop in the office and ask for a tutorial about nerves, cranial nerves, nerves of the head and neck, nerves in general. Should we talk about nerves today? I've got, I'm writing some teaching for the anatomy course for the physician associates and I've got a mental block. I've got writer's block in how to teach the, oh, you know, the tract of the spinal cord. It's not an easy thing to learn or teach. That's a bit too much for today, isn't it? But let's try and break through that writer's block by talking about, let's let's look at the spinal cord, let's look at the branches that come out of the spinal cord, we can talk about the motor components, we can talk about the sympathetic trunk, we can look at the sympathetic ganglia that are coming out, we can talk about the white and grey rami communicants, students were asking me about that last week, and then we can talk about what a spinal nerve is, what a nerve is, kind of expand on the stuff that Annabelle and I talked about, tried to talk about the other week. How's about that then? Let's talk about nerves. Nerves? Let's find some nerve models. Um, we started talking about neurons and nerves and ganglia and plexuses a little while ago. So I thought we'd start with the spinal cord. Parts of the spinal cord, we can see uh, spinal nerves coming out of there, so what are spinal nerves? And then I've got the sympathetic trunk on a thing over there, and we can talk about sympathetic, parasympathetic, stuff like that. Yeah? As in, we can talk about the physical things um, rather as much as what they do, where they are. So, the spinal cord, right? What are the parts of the spinal cord? So if we look at this, so this is a section through the spinal cord here. This is grey matter, this is white matter. White matter appears white because it's surrounded by myelin. Schwann cells make myelin, myelin surrounds the axons of neurons, they insulate it. What they really do is make action potentials propagate down the length of the axon a lot faster. So the white matter then in the spinal cord, these are axons going um, up and down the spinal cord. So they're going up and down the spinal cord to the brain or from the brain. So sensory going back to the brain, motor going from the brain, doing all sorts of things. That's the white matter going up and down, right? So the gray matter, the gray matter is gray because there are fewer myelinated things in there. There's less myelin. So in there, we've got nearest nerve cell bodies. We've got the bodies of those neurons. We've got interconnections between neurons. Um, we've got so we've got synapses. You've got uh, reflexes that are passing through here. You've got nerves that are coming down the spinal cord, and then synapsing with nerves at this level, which are then going off and doing things or coming in, and synapsing with cells, which then go up the the, the white matter to the thalamus and the brain and stuff like that. So these are axons. These are nerve cell bodies and connections. Right. Now, if we add the, what we see of the nerves here, right, if we add these bits, we've got, we can see there's a bunch of stuff going out and going back in. And I say going out and going back in because this is dorsal, this is ventral, right? So this is posterior, this is anterior. So that's the front, right? That side, that's the back. You can tell because of this bulge here. This is the DRG, the dorsal root ganglion. So it's dorsal root and it's a ganglion. It's all in the name. Um, so we've got these horns here of the grey matter. This is the dorsal horn, this is the ventral horn. This is the dorsal root, this is the ventral root. All motor stuff comes out of the ventral root. So all motor stuff, somatic motor, right? So somatic stuff I can control, but also the autonomic motor is also coming out of here. The sympathetic trunk or sympathetic neurons come out of the spinal cord, right? They come out of the spinal cord between levels, what, T1, the first thoracic level, and about L2, the second lumbar level. And when we've got, uh, I said, uh, we've got a dorsal horn and a ventral horn, at those levels within the thorax, you can see a little intermediate horn here. And the, set, the, new, the uh, cell bodies of the sympathetic neurons are, are found in that intermediate horn. And then they send their axons out of the, the ventral root as well. So all the motor stuff comes out of here. Parasympathetic stuff, which we'll talk about in a bit, 
their motor stuff comes out of here as well but that's only at a few levels low down in the pelvis gray matter white matter uh ventral dorsal dorsal root ganglion ventral root dorsal root now you can see there's a whole bunch of little rootlets right all these rootlets are contributing to form um, what's going to become the spinal nerve and what happens is what we don't quite see on this model but you'll usually see on most illustrations in most textbooks is that this dorsal root and ventral root they come together here but then they, they divide again straight away and you get this little ramus what's ramus uh, so ramus literally means branch um, so there's a ramus that goes dorsally and there's a ramus that continues around ventrally Got the dorsal ramus and the ventral ramus, or the anterior ramus and the posterior ramus, if you like. Um, now, this dorsal ramus only goes a little way, and it goes to the muscles that are around here. And, of course, this is deep in the back, so these are innervating the deep muscles of the back around here. Um, the ventral ramus is the one that carries on around and then gets described as a, a, a spinal nerve, a mixed spinal nerve, which at the thoracic levels would be an intercostal nerve. Um, but they form all sorts of mixed nerves, right? So that means that these nerves after this point are mixed. They've got sensory neurons within them and they've got motor neurons within them. And up to a certain point, um, they're likely to have sympathetic neurons in them as well and maybe visceral afferent neurons. So if sympathetic motor neurons are coming out of here and going to the sympathetic trunk, which we'll look at in a minute, visceral afferent neurons, so those neurons that are sensory to visceral things, stuff we're not necessarily aware of they're coming in through this route here but they are, they often follow the same routes that the sympathetic nerves take it's just it's just wiring in your body just like wiring in your house right so the visceral afferents will come in here as well and sign ups and stuff so the visceral afferents uh probably the connections they make with somatic afferents so somatic sensory nerves that are coming in account for referred pain so the visceral afferents coming say from the appendix um, will go in at the level of about t10 um, and the the somatic afferents coming from the skin at the level of t10 go in at the same level they just it's just the way it's wired they just have to go in at the same level so the patient perceives pain around the umbilicus around the t10 level and that often moves to the right so there's the spinal cord Okay, so the cell bodies for the motor neurons are in here, but the cell bodies for the sensory neurons, the somatic sensory neurons, are in here in the dorsal root ganglion. This is a collection of cell bodies, and those cells are sending out one axon that way and one axon that way. Right, they've got like two axons coming off them, and the action potential just gets just the action potential just gets propagated across and pops in here and then goes back up to the thalamus and we either perceive it or don't. So then these spinal nerves here, these are actually those uh, ventral rami, these ventral branches, these mixed spinal nerves of motor and sensory neurons which will come out and become all of the nerves of your body. For example, these up here in the neck, some of these will come together and form the brachial plexus which will form other nerves which will then supply your upper limb with motor innovation and receive sensory innovation from it. Here's an interesting thing. Let's count the vertebrae up here. So these are the cervical vertebrae. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This one's connected to a rib, so that's the first thoracic vertebra, right? Now, how many spinal nerves have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are seven cervical vertebrae but eight cervical spinal nerves. That's because of some really fun embryology. The vertebrae all form out of phase, half a step out of phase with all the nerves and the muscles in between them and stuff. So there are eight, eight cervical spinal nerves, seven cervical vertebrae. Now, if we count uh, these vertebrae that are attached to ribs, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That's not connected to a rib, so that's lumbar. So we've got 12 thoracic vertebrae. How many nerves have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so that makes more sense. We've got 12 thoracic vertebrae, 12 uh, spinal nerves. And then you've got one, two, three, four, five, lumbar vertebrae, one, two, three, four, five, uh, lumbar spinal nerves. And then down in the sacrum, those sacral bones have all fused. 
ooh, this model's really sticky. Why is this model really sticky? If we think about the intercostal nerves here, which are running around in between the ribs, those are gonna supply motor innervation to the intercostal muscles. They're gonna collect sensory innervation from the skin of the thorax to their neck, stuff like that. But what about uh, the sympathetic trunk then, if we're talking about motor nerves? Let me go get another model. All right, here's a big model. Um, right, okay. You can see on here then we've got, there's the spinal cord. You can see here are all these spinal nerves coming out here. So up there, intercostal nerves. Down here, we're forming the lumbosacral plexus. You can see a bit more of a plexus here. Oh, look, there's the brachial plexus up there and so on. So these are mixed motor and sensory nerves, right? That's what, that's what these nerves are. They're collections of motor and sensory neurons. Um, but we can also see on here, we can see these guys, right? Boom, 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 boom. These are uh, the ganglia of the sympathetic chain or the sympathetic trunk. And we can see that they're not found just between the T1 to L2 levels, but they continue all the way down into the pelvis, all the way down here, and end up down here. They go up into the neck here, so we've got these cervical ganglia as well. So um, now, what's happening in here? So. Uh, Preganglionic sympathetic neurons start here, for example, if we imagine an intermediate horn here, the cell neuron, uh, the neuron cell body is here, it sends out an axon around here, that axon goes out here. So it's going out with this nerve here, and then we can see, can you see these little diddy connections, all right? There's a little diddy connection there, a little diddy connection there. Yeah, that's quite a good one. You see the two there? Boom, boom. So there are two connections there between this ganglion, the sympathetic ganglion, and this nerve. And you can see that this ganglion is also connecting with the ganglion beneath it and other bits and bobs. So these are more rami, just branches again, right? These are rami communicants, plural. Uh, rami communicants, singular, I think. Um, so these rami communicants are literally communicating branches between this spinal nerve, which is a mixed nerve, which is carrying out those preganglionic sympathetic neurons this far, and then those preganglionic sympathetic neurons, well, some of them are passing out to this ganglion. Of course, in the ganglion, they synapse with other neurons. Those neurons would be postganglionic sympathetic neurons, because they're after the ganglion, postganglion. Then those postganglionic neurons will go off. For example, they might come back through this rami communicants and go back into this spinal nerve, then go off around the body. Because these sympathetic neurons have got to get everywhere. So if you think about it then, um, the sympathetic nerves have got to get everywhere in the body. They do all sorts of things. But if you think about one of their most basic functions in, in us, um, warm-blooded mammals is that we regulate our temperature uh, largely through our skin. So if we want to lose heat, um, we'll send more blood to the surface of the skin, which means that the arteries and the arterioles in the skin, they all have smooth muscle around them. So that smooth muscle relaxes, more blood flows out of the skin, more heat is lost through the skin. And if we want to maintain our heat or conserve our heat, then that smooth muscle in those blood vessels contracts and it constricts the blood vessels. So less blood flows to the skin and to the surface of the skin. So that's under the control of sympathetic innovations. So these sympathetic neurons have got to get to the skin everywhere. So they may well go back with this intercostal uh, nerve and pass around the thorax and supply uh, innovation to the blood vessels underneath the skin. Um, and in fact, you'll see sympathetic neurons uh, following big blood vessels, for example, up into the skull with, the, with, with those big blood vessels up there and also down. The, so sometimes sympathetic nerves travel with other nerves Sometimes they form their own nerves as, as splanchnic nerves, which run through the thorax and the abdomen, and sometimes they'll follow blood vessels to their target. So the grey and white rami communicans, as they get called, uh, are grey and white for the same reason as the grey and white matter in the spinal cord is grey and white. The, the, the white rami communicans carries more myelinated fibres than the grey rami communicans, and that's about it. Also, the way in which these other ganglia form up into the neck and down into the pelvis is that sometimes when these sympathetic neurons come in here, they sometimes they go down away and then they synapse and go off or they go up away 
and then they synapse forming a new ganglion and then they go off so some of the sympathetic the preganglionic sympathetic neurons that come out go up go up form a ganglion and then postganglionic ganglion, neurons come off from there all right so that's sympathetic now We're not going to talk about cranial nerves right now, I don't think. We'll save that for another day, or well, several other days, because cranial nerves, there's so much to talk about, they're great. Um, but the vagus nerve is the biggie here. Um, if, we consider paras if we consider the innervation to the thorax and the abdomen and the neck and other parts as well, the vagus nerve carries parasympathetic neurons uh, from the brainstem down through the thorax and through the abdomen, sending off branches. So the vagus nerve, it has other jobs as well, but it carries an awful lot of parasympathetic neurons, for example, to the gut. This is what we see in the stomach, right? So in the stomach, we got, there's a nerve here, and there's a nerve here. This is anterior, this is posterior. These are two vagus nerves. This is the left and right vagus nerve. Uh, during embryology, the gut tube rotates, so it takes the left vagus nerve around anteriorly. So these two vagus nerves then spread out across the stomach and the GI tract, and that whole enteric nervous system gets going and does its own thing, our second brain, um, controlling the GI tract. So the vagus nerve carries parasympathetic innervation. Again, that's motor. So sympathetic is motor that comes out of the spinal cord. Parasympathetic is motor. A lot of it comes out of the, the brain itself um, or the, the brain stem with the vagus nerve. But down in the, uh, in the pelvis, the vagus nerve doesn't get into the pelvis. Of course, you've got the peritoneum. It would have to go through the peritoneum to get through the peritoneal cavity and into the structures of the pelvis. In the pelvis, we find sacral nuclei within the spinal cord at levels S2, S3, S4. And then from those um, sacral nuclei, preganglionic parasympathetic motor neurons pop out of the spinal cord and then they, they, they either go to target organs if they're really nearby or they get involved in, they, they, they get uh, into the hypogastric plexus, which is a plexus of nerves, sympathetic nerves and other bits and bobs which then goes to the target organs. And usually, there are some ganglia, but often uh, preganglionic parasympathetic neurons get to their target organ, and then they synapse with a postganglionic, very short postganglionic parasympathetic um, neuron and innervates the whatever target structure. Uh, uh, so there's a thought. What is the parasympathetic innervation to the pelvis doing? And what's the somatic innervation to the pelvis doing? Yeah. I'm not gonna talk about that now, it's for you to think about. And then the visceral afferents from the pelvis, they'll often follow those same paths that the parasympathetic neurons take, because that's just convenient, isn't it? Well, there's some embryology in it anyway. And that leads to the pelvic pain line concept. Have you heard of the pelvic pain line? No? Okay, go look it up. That was a, a, a going over of core components of the nervous system in terms of uh, the white and grey matter of the spinal cord, what the spinal cord is, what's in the white and grey matter, how the nerves are formed from the spinal cord, where sympathetic nerves come from, where parasympathetic nerves come from, and where visceral afferent nerves go to. And don't forget those somatic afferents as well, going back through the dorsal root ganglion. Okay. Hopefully that was helpful.